Welcome to World Thinkers. If this is your first time, my name is Sibio. And if you like this type of content, do make sure that you subscribe. Also hit the notification bell so you won't miss a bit. Now in today's video, we'll be taking a look at the standard of prophecy. Now, as we see, many prophets are prophesying and uh, so many of them, they miss their prophecy and uh, they do all kinds of things and then the justification that we do is or what they what they tell us is that they should fix their hearing when they hear from God. Now, I want to refute that because um, you can't get two prophecies right and five wrong. That's not how it works. And I'll show you in the Bible for just a second. Um, uh, the Bible says in First Samuel chapter 3, verse 19, And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. You see, that's about a 100% record of uh, how um, prophecy worked according to, to the Bible. Now, Samuel was a major prophet, and um, uh, we'll, we'll get to the, to, the, to the particular verse that I want us to look at, uh, which is Deuteronomy 13 in just a second, and that will be coming up. And I want to teach you and uh, bring you through some points that I want you to consider whenever you look at a prophecy or a prophet, and this is the characteristics, and this is how you identify them. And the mistakes we make most of the time is we judge prophecy by the performance or by the signs or by the coming to pass. And that's not the standard of how we ought to judge scripture. Uh, a prophecy and I'll show you that in a second but let us go to 1st Kings 8 verse 56 the Bible says praise be to the Lord who has given rest to his people Israel uh, just as he promised not one word has failed of all the good promises he gave through his servant Moses 100% record ha we are talking about biblical prophecies and the prophets of the bible whenever they gave a prophecy there was about a hundred percent accuracy rate now today's modern day prophets they give you about a three to five ratio which two prophecies are accurate and five are in any case let us continue now uh, the thing that i want to to address today is the violation of Exodus 20 verse 7 and the Bible says uh, in Exodus 20 verse 7 you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his word and so that's the violation you see we blaspheme in today's society we blaspheme the Holy Spirit more than we protect the name of the Lord like Jude chapter 1 verse 3 is not being considered. We, don't, we do not fight for the faith. We do not uh, uh, contend earnestly for the faith once delivered uh, to all the saints. No, what we do is we blaspheme. And we justify blaspheming by uh, 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 endorsing and validating certain uh, men that do that. And so, uh, uh, just a disclaimer. Deuteronomy 13 verse 5 talks about, um, you know, chopping... Uh, the the prophets uh, now we do not do that in modern day that's not prescribed uh, as a as a prophet in modern day we do not do that uh, so just as a disclaimer the argument is not about whether we should or we should uh, uh, the, the argument is the ratio of accuracy and whether they are true prophet or not. That is the argument. The arg argument has nothing to do with chapter 5. Why? Because we understand that in the New Testament, you can come to repentance, you can uh, put your faith in Jesus Christ, you can turn from your e evil and wicked ways, and you can trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and the Lord can rescue you from the wrath of God and, and place you into sonship, and that's what we understand. Number two, the thing that we also need to consider is once you still violate uh, certain commandments and certain statutes of the Lord Jesus Christ, Romans 1 verse 28 comes into play where the Lord reprobates that type of a person, giving them over to their own mind, understanding that in full. Uh, sorry for me looking down. I'm looking at my notes not to forget anything. So let us jump straight into uh, um, today's teaching. Now, uh, just also 
to note, that's why we are marking them so that you can avoid them. That is Romans 16 verse uh, 17. So today's false prophets and false teachers are being marked. Why? So that you can avoid them, so that you can stay away from them. And that is why we mark them. It is not to, uh, uh, you know, um, be funny or anything, but theologically, as you will see in a moment, they need to be sound. Doctrinally, they need to be sound. And, and, and that's the standard of all uh, 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 biblical prophecy. That is what needs to be done. So just also to give you the basis of your faith is, uh, you know, the whole emphasis of Deuteronomy 6 verse 5 is that to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and with all your might, or with all your strength. And Jesus emphasized that in Mark chapter 12, verse 28, when he was having a dialogue with the scribe, and Jesus addressed that, and uh, he sort of gave uh, uh, edifying uh, um, that particular commandment, making it, you know, emphasizing on that particular point. The problem with today is we are moved away by these people. And let us jump straight into today's text. And it is Deuteronomy 13. And if you are there, the Bible reads, if a prophet, if a prophet or one who foretell by dreams appear among you and announces to you a miraculous sign or a wonder. Okay. And if the sign or the wonder of which he has spoken take place and he said, let us follow other gods, God, you have not known. Okay. And let us worship them. You must not listen to the words of that prophet or dreamer. The Lord your God is testing you to find whether you love him with all your heart and all your, uh, 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 with all your soul. It is the Lord your God you must follow and him must reserve. And you keep his commandments and obey him, serve him and hold fast to him. It is much to take in. So we'll start with point number one. The issue here is when a dreamer of dreams or a prophet arises and give you a sign or a wonder. Now the Bible does, the Bible says that it may come to pass or it may not come to pass. That is not the argument here. Whether uh, uh, he can perform the miracle or not. That's not the standard how you judge whether the person is a true prophet or not. Remember there's magicians that can perform signs and wonders. There's uh, uh, sangomas and other people that do the same things as prophet does. Or, or, or people that claim they come from God. They do the same thing. So there's nothing different. But what, what is different is, is that you should not listen to them. You see, carefully examining what the prophet is saying or what they are altering, or what they are proclaiming, and that's how you judge whether it's a true prophet or not. Why? Because you need to see what are the words, what is, what is the proclamation, what is this person declaring, what is this prophet uh, 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 elevating, is it himself, like many of us we see. And um, now, before we move on to number two, which is the testing, I want to, I want to, to you, you probably say, but, we do not serve other gods because they proclaim the name of Jesus. They call up the name of Jesus. Yes, many of, many of you will say, Lord, Lord, and even cast out demons. We know the scripture. It's familiar to us. But what I want to point out is this. Somebody asked me a question. He, uh, I, uh, he asked, why do these people refer to the God of Major One, the God of Alf Lukau, the God of who, the God? I said, yes, that is exactly what they are referring to. That's why the Bible says they will lead you to other gods. So when you open up your Bible, you don't find the God of Major One. No, you find the God of Isaac, Jacob, uh, uh, and Abraham, and, and that's the God. You find the same God that prescribes us to t the, uh, the seed that is Jesus and going on and on and on. So we don't see this type of gods. And that's why you need to be careful. And you are like, okay, but it's just a frame of reference or it's just something they say. No, they are referring to other gods. The God of made. Do you find that God in the Bible? Exactly. And so th that is just point number one. So there is an other God in play. It is, they are pushing you away from God's word. That's why you don't read the Bible. That's why you don't like to study the word. One particular person, this is what he, exactly his words. He told me, don't hide behind the Bible. What? Don't hide behind, 
where am, where am I, what is the ground? What is the foundation that we are standing on? A prophet's words? No. The Bible is a prophetic word on its own. And therefore, it's more reliable now because your prophets are missing five, six prophecies uh, every uh, uh, now. And it's like a regular thing. And then what they say is they need to tune in how they listen to God. Rubbish. But in any case, let us move on to number two, which is the Lord is testing you, child of God. The Lord is testing you to see, will you follow a dream of dreams? Will you follow a prophet? Will you follow after the words of him? Like many of you, that's what we do. We follow them because they perform signs and wonders. The Bible says that is not the standard of judging them. The standard of judging whether it's a true prophet or not, it is dire it, it, are they directing you to God? Are they pointing you to the solution or are they drawing you to themselves? Are they pointing to themselves as the answer as we see? And, and this is what you need to understand. So that's number two is God is testing you to see if you will follow a sign, a wonder, or will you stay fixed to God's word? Will you, uh, like uh, verse four, it says, keep Keep his commandments and obey him, serve him and hold fast to him. Meaning, the Lord your God is the only one you should serve. The Lord your God is the only one that you should rely on. Keep his statutes, obey him and serve him alone. Interesting, right? Uh, so the basis of whether a prophet is true or false is not on the basis of whether a prophet can perform a sign or a wonder. No, it is whether that prophet is leading you away from God's word. Leading you away from God's word. And so as we see in, um, I, I want to read a particular scripture to you. So the Bible says in Isaiah 8 verse 19 to 20, the Bible says, When someone tell you to consult mediums and spirits who whisper and mute, should not a should not a people inquire of their God? Why consult the dead and behalf of the living? Consult God's instructions and the testimony of warning. If anyone does not speak according to the uh, according to His word, they have no light of they have no light of dawn. Okay, very interesting, very interesting stuff. So let us move on. To number three, it is not by performance, but it's by the will of God. It's by the word of God, and that's how you judge them. Um, just two last scriptures that I want to point out. So how, how, how are we going to judge them? So the question is, the question is how? And Second Peter verse 2 explains it it says many will follow their deprived conduct and will bring the way of truth into this repute you see that's why if you follow them you follow after them leaving the word of god behind that's a violation to god and that's why these people are men pleasers and so um, uh, 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 verse 3 says in their greed these teachers will exploit you that's why we see the things we see with fabricate stories, you know. For just a second, do me a favor. Once you turn on prophetic channel or any of these people that you watch, uh, prophets, even in America, it's the same thing, uh, especially charismatic. They are having the screw loose as we see uh, many things happening. If you see what is happening in the church, you look at charismatic, that is what you'll find. But in any case... Um, let us just stop there at fabricate stories. You see how they tell you stories? Not based on the word of God. No, they draw you to themselves. Yes, exactly. Their, co their condemnation has long been handed over, over them and their destruction has not been asleep. And so what is the problem? Number one, the problem is that they are leading you away from God's will. They are leading you away from God's word. They are leading them to unto themselves to exploit you. This is the problem. That's why Jude 1 uh, uh, verse 4 
the Bible says, they have crept in among us unnoticed. So they slipped in the church. They are standing in the pulpits. They are preaching to you by dreams, of, by dreamers of dreams, by uh, uh, fabricate, fabricated stories. And that's how they preach to you. The Bible says, for certain individuals whose condemnation is written out about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. Yes. They are ungodly people who revert the grace of God into a license of immorality and deny Jesus Christ our sovereign. You, you see that word there? It says sovereign and Lord. So the question is, will you follow after this man? If you think they have the word of God in their mouth, if you think what they are proclaiming is the word, the true biblical meaning, the true interpretation of historical Christianity, you may go after them. You may follow them. And the Bible says that these are blasphemous. Exodus 20, verse 7, that is the violation that they are violating against. It's misusing the name of God as if God has told them so. We'll get to Deuteronomy 18 in the next time when we meet again. Until then, may God bless you and may God keep you. Find yourself a biblical church and stop the chaos.